What's up, guys? My name is Thomas Brush, and I'm the. I can't. I can't do this. Um, let's just talk normal like human beings. How's that sound? Um, my name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe. I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma. I want to show you how I do 2D art and how I bring that into Unity and create parallax systems and, and build a whole sort of beautiful parallaxing 2D game. Um, so I'm just going to sort of do a speed run here of the artwork and I'm going to talk you through it. Um, so basically I always start with a background element of some kind and this is a background that I made a while ago and then I just bring I start drawing simple vector art um, and then to to give a sort of feeling of a platform what I'll do is I'll actually draw a shade underneath with the same shape to give it sort of that lip so as you can see there's a lip there um, and then what I also like to do is I have set patterns that I've made and I use those patterns over and over and over again throughout the game's development. So it's been two years of using this one pattern of bricks. Um, I'll slowly bring uh, more, more of a faint blue color, especially with this level, um, into more of the background elements to make it feel a little bit foggy. So as you can see, this second platform in the background um, certainly has a little bit more blue to it and gives it a little bit of feeling of fog um, and I think that that certainly gives mood and atmosphere to my games. Um, I'll also use a stamp that I made, uh, a brush that I made, um, that allows me to etch in various pieces and triangles into this brick to make it feel a little bit more rustic and old. And then I'll just use a brush that I made again about two years ago and this is just a moss brush and it's, it's one single image that I just draw over and over um, and you'll see that a lot of the work that I do in my 2D graphics are um, reused just one single basically a stamp so this is the bushes here um, I make one really pretty looking image and then I just reuse the hell out of that thing um, and I, I used to feel really guilty about this like I wasn't being creative but it's, it's when you're an indie developer when you're one guy doing the artwork it really helps to have um, things that you can reuse that don't look repetitive um, and you'll see here that right now it looks a little bit repetitive but once you start adding shade and, and gradients and in this case I'm doing a little bit of a bevel to give some light and, and in the case of my 2D games I always have a direction in my mind for where the light is um, there's no real-time lighting it's all baked in by like my illustrations so in this case there's a uh, the top right hand corner of this I, I imagine the Sun shining down towards the left bottom corner um, now in the case of when I do brick artwork I'll try and add in as you can see here I'll try and add in some shade and some depth to make it look like it's made of various pieces and all that is is just a simple gradient um, from left to right um, also what I like to use and I actually use it all the time is Adobe's um, cloud library um, and this is just artwork that I've saved so um, as you can see in the library section there on the right hand corner I've got all these different kinds of pieces of artwork that I can drag and drop um, to get things um, quickly designed, quickly developed. Um, I did not have this approach with my last game Pinstripe. It was much more sort of storybook hand drawn. In the case of Once Upon a Coma I knew that I needed to get the game done much quicker and in, that's usually the case with most games um, when you have a tight budget. So. Uh, as you can see, I'm using artwork from the Adobe library that I made and saved. Um, and that's a window right there. And I just sort of give it a little bit of a bloom. And suddenly it looks like it fits right in with the world, even though it's used, you know, hundreds of times in the game. Um, so I'm going back and forth between an illustration that I did about a week ago. And I'm grabbing some of the colors from that. But as you can see, I do have a color palette. And it's not selected properly currently, but there's a co color palette for this level and it's basically orange and blue um, kind of contrasting colors um, so yeah I've got all sorts of graphics that I just drag and drop and this is important to remember when you're doing indie game development you want to make sure that if you're designing something you want it to be scalable you want it to, to use um, well both scalable long term but also scalable in terms of the size so you want to be able to use the artwork that you're designing at very large scale for the foreground elements but also smaller uh, as well and you want it to look good at, as a thumbnail but also as um, big blown up 4k graphics 
So right now I'm doing the grass and I learned this thing from Ivan De Earl and Ivan De Earl is an incredible illustrator um, who um, did some Disney artwork in the, uh, I don't know exactly when he did, I think it was like the 50s. Um, he sort of, I learned from him that if you wanna make something look moody, just add some really sharp or um, skewed shadows. So you can see on the grass here, I've got a shadow of the bushes running almost horizontally across the grass. And that gives it a feeling of twilight um, and evening. Um, so it definitely achieving a moody atmosphere um, in this illustration here. So all these elements uh, in my mind, I have an idea of where they're going to be placed in terms of the Z axis to give that parallaxing. Um, and that includes the fog here. So fog is really simple for me. I just draw a simple sort of various squiggles and then I fill them in with a gradient and then I blur them with a motion blur directly to the right and then I also do just a, a standard Gaussian blur I think that's how you say that right <laughs> Gaussian blur um, and now here also you see I have a stamp that I created of just simple pine trees and it's again just one stamp it's not varying between multiple sprites it's just one single stamp that flips on the x-axis as you it's sort of random really so I'm just sort of stamping those around and, and then I also like to fade the tips um, of the trees to give it a feeling like if you, any, if you ever look at something in the fog, um, as you go upwards um, into that fog, it, things get sort of blend into the sky and you'll see that I'm trying to blend and add fog um, to these trees. Now, I always like to remember, even though the trees are sort of blending into the sky, that's not because of fog, I think that's more just, it. it it's not as distracting, um, but in the case of this game, I always try and remember where the fog is. I choose either, is it on the floor or is it in the sky? And in this case, it's all on the floor. So as you can see, every single layer uh, has a little bit of fog behind, behind it to give it some contrast. So if you look at those bushes, the two layers of bushes, see that white rim? Um, it's just a little bit of fog to give it contrast and that really makes things pop, um, especially when you're using such a muted color palette. And I love muted color palettes because they're certainly moody, but they're dangerous with 2D games because there's not a lot of contrast. And so you can sort of fake your way through adding contrast to a muted color palette um, by using fog. So let's see here. I'm trying to think of what I'm doing here. I think I'm renaming layers. Okay, so now I use something called PSD Importer. And I, I basically import that PSD that I saved. I've named all the layers intuitively. And the layers import, which is amazing. And I import those layers with this plugin and you can get it on GitHub um, for free. And there's a button that says build Unity Sprites. And as you can see, it literally just built it and plopped it into my scene, which is, so it saves so much more time uh, than what I'm used to because pinstripe I would bring in PNGs of every single layer and then rearrange those um, with PSD importer uh, the plugin again that you can get on github um, you can plop them in and then now here I am just arranging them on the z-axis and my developer his name is Eric Coburn he actually developed a parallax system that basically runs a for loop that runs all of these different layers um, and basically looks at the z-axis and says how fast do these want to move with the player? Things in the background move slow, really slow. I mean, if something is like the sun, for example, if you're ever driving past the sun, the sun doesn't even move, but the trees are moving, right? So things close to the camera move really quickly. Um, the player is at, is at zero Z, and so he moves at standard speed, and then things way in the background, like the sky, um, basically don't move at all. Here I'm adding the polygon collider. It's just a simple 2D polygon collider, and I just do this custom, I don't really have it you know, build with the sprite at all. I just build it um, custom. And there's different kinds of polygon colliders. Um, there's a platform which you can jump through and that's a layer that Eric has built that um, detects whether the player can jump through a platform. Those are things that are above his head. Things below are just simple ground and you will never be able to pass through those. So as you can see, I've also got a background um, that's, well, I mean, I'm looking at this right now. I really like it. Um, basically the way this plays, um, the parallaxing makes it feel so much more alive than that if you actually look uh, at the Photoshop file. Um, and also, if you if you're when in doubt, add fog, right? So when in doubt, you want to make sure you're adding fog. Um, you want to make sure you're adding fog to the scene, and you want to use particle effects. Um, also, add lights. Um, so these are just prefabbed lights that I use. 
Um, and I've also got various pots that I like to add. So these are all prefabbed. If, you, if you've noticed, I'm really into reusing items and being as economical as possible. I think indie game development, you have to be economical. So we've got pumpkins that we use. Just place them all over the place, rotate them a little bit. And finally, we've got enemies. So these are little electronic jellyfish. So all of a sudden, we went from a Photoshop file and we have this super live scene. Um, and it's moody and it also has color correction applied to it in a vignette and also some bloom and motion blur. And those are all post process, pro, post, what am I trying to say? Post processing effects inside of Unity. So we finally got some spine trees. Spine is just a 2D animation software. So I go from Photoshop, I design these pine trees and then I bring them into spine, animate them a little bit, have them wave in the wind and then finally add a rain um, particle emitter. Uh, and suddenly you have this stormy scene. So this is why I love um, 2D game design. Going from a Photoshop image to this beautiful, um, and this is all, by the way, I was just looking at my color um, correction ramp. Um, there's no real true black and that it makes it feel old and rustic. Um, and that's, that's why I use the color correction. But yeah, so going from Photoshop file of just sprites to this really full almost 3d look what i mean is it almost looks like we're on uh, part of a play or something so that's how i go from photoshop to unity and it's it's such an exciting process i love it every day i do it and uh it's it's something i wanted to share with you guys if you love this video if you thought this was really helpful please guys subscribe um, comment, ask me questions. I'd love to answer those questions. Again, my name is Thomas Brush. I make video games. Please support indie games just in general. If you want to check out my games, check out the link in the description. But if you don't want to check out my games, just support indie games in general. It's what keeps that, your support is what keeps that weird corner of the video game industry alive. So thanks guys. Peace. Wait, what am I doing? Okay, peace. That's an okay sign. That's a peace sign. Peace, right?